So today we are going to start the capacitor as a circuit element and uh, how to use the variety of uh, grouping of uh, capacitor to find the equivalent capacitance. And also we are going to learn about uh, how to deal with uh, capacitor circuit or we simply say C circuit uh, when connected across a <coughs> cell or energy source. So we are going to see variety of laws something called Kirchhoff's law of charge and current. So let's begin one by one. Grouping of capacitor we have done. We have done the basic series and panel, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, today I, I wanted to show you a alternative method of solving any question of capacitance using the idea of parallel plate capacitor. So what is the idea of parallel plate capacitor? C we write as K, which is the dielectric constant of uh, the medium between the plates, absolute not, which is a permittivity of free space, area of the plate, which is same for both the plate upon the separation. So how this formula is powerful? <coughs> Imagine if someone is asking you, can you find the capstance of a So now we are going to learn something called capacitance with dielectric. Let's put a heading. <clears throat> so you all have seen the tough method. Now you will see the easier one which is easy means really easy. So imagine we have a spherical capacitor, but now filled with direct. So how to find the capacitance of such capacitor? The idea is every capacitor we can convert into parallel plate capacitor. And what is the significance of parallel plate capacitor? That uh, the separation should be very small. Okay. So if you remember the answer, the answer was one by a minus one by. Okay. So imagine <coughs> we have two uh, concentric shell with uh, radius r and r plus dr. Then the capacitance will be how much? Because it's very small, we can add as uh, BC and we can add as uh, 4 pi upstream not K 1 by R minus 1 by R plus DR. Okay. This is the way of acting because we are using the formula. But if you look carefully, so you can add as 1 by R minus. 1 by R, 1 plus dr by R. So we can rewrite as uh, 4 pi k epsilon not R upon y and r. Tell me if I'm doing something wrong here. So 4 pi k option not, and uh, you can take common one by R. 1 minus, and this, this you can add as 1 plus dr by R. 
I'm just trying to show you the most basic thing. And uh, we can use the binomial approximation because uh, of the obvious reason. One minus. And if you simplify, this will become. And so this looks like a four pi r square. So basically you can write as a k epsilon naught area upon separation, which is exactly the formula of you can see c, right? So what does it mean is that if I really take two concentric shell one with radius r and another with radius dr and because dr is really small can we say the surface area of this plate and this plate is roughly same can we say yes or no? and whenever the plate areas are same then the separation we can easily write as dr and we know the medium is having dielectric constant k, so we can directly write elementary capacitance as look at this carefully k epsilon naught, and the area of the plate will be how much? Four pi. R. And what is the separation between the two plates? Dr. So you can clearly see that. Uh, <clears throat> The DC can be written like this, and this is the easy way to apply the formula directly here uh, instead of uh, going through the rigorous derivation. So, this is not required. I mean, you're not supposed to uh, do all this rigorous calculation. You can just use the uh, simple parallel plate capacitor, and you will get the answer. Now, once you get this answer, you can see that. Uh, if I divide the entire space between the inner plate to the outer plate into such concentric spheres, then every sphere comes one after the other, isn't it? And because every sphere comes one after the other till you reach the other end, so which kind of combination is this? Is it series combination or parallel combination? Then. Which combination can you is? repeat the way I have taken the elementary to contribute every such elementary? We need to add their contribution. So basically, we have converted this single capacitor into series, series of such capacitor, right? Yeah, because the yeah. first capacitor will come, then next will come after that. Then next will come after that, and then you can reach the final end, right? The right, the outer end. Yes. So these are in series combination. Therefore, to find the C equivalent, you have to add the inverse of all. And how we add? One. Very simple. And uh, this you can rewrite as. So without knowing the formula, and now R will go from where to where A to B. So I don't have much space left. So I'll add one by C equal to how much? You can take one by four pi epsilon naught k common, and then one by R square give you minus one by R, and the answer will be one by A. So the C equal will be exactly what we got so what i'm trying to say that every question can be solved only if you remember a single formula and the formula is parallel plate capture no need to remember any other formula it really doesn't matter which question you're solving every question can be solved using parallel plate capacitor formula parallel plate capacitor formula is this clear yes so can you apply or try this idea that we just learned 
you derive the capacitance of a cylindrical capacitor if you remember yes please do it and tell me the answer हेलो यस सर आई गॉट इट टू बाय एब्सोल्यूट नॉट एल के बाय एल एन ऑफ बी बाय ए वेरी गुड दैट्स राइट आंसर सो यू कैन सी सडनली द एंटायर चैप्टर हैज बिकम इजी नाउ सो फार यू हैव बीन स्ट्रगलिंग नाउ द थिंग्स हैज चेंज एंड यू कैन इजीली डिराइव एनी फार्मूला जस्ट इफ यू रिमेंबर ओनली वन फार्मूला सो नो मैटर uh sorry which capacitor they give it to you you stick to the method and you will get the answer so now you can let's say if i ask this question if you cut any elementary how to look like so if you cut any elementary it will look like a thin hollow shell isn't it yeah and this thin hollow shell You know how to write. Okay, I haven't filled with capacitor uh, dielectric, but uh, uh, it's totally okay if you have got the answer for dielectric. Now the best part is it is not just that ability to solve the question. The best part is even if I make the dielectric constant a variable, you will be able to derive with ease. Yes. And that is the biggest takeaway from this uh, method that the method is so powerful that even if i introduce some sort of variation the modus operandi remains same and you will get the right answer so let's do some question on that also for that let me just solve for a rest those who have not got the answer so how many of you have got the answer please raise your only one so rest are deriving All right, very good. You should. Anybody else getting the answer? No. All right. So, if you practice, if you try, you will get the answer. That's not difficult. So, how to write? This is a cylinder, and we can can write like this: one by DC. Always remember the formula in cylinders. K epsilon naught. What is the area here? Two <coughs> pi r. Two pi r. Two pi r. Very good. And what is the separation? D. Again, D. Yeah. D. Yeah. And that is why you can say the C one by C current is uh, inverse of this one by DC, and uh, we can write as D R upon two uh, pi epsilon naught k L R. That's very simple. A to B. So one by C current turns out to be uh, L N. B by A upon two by epsilon naught K into L, and therefore the C equal to minus two percent. So any time if you uh, forget the formula, don't worry, you can derive it. Okay, so let's do some other question. So imagine uh, if we have a 
in fact if we have a parallel plate capacitor itself the only difference is this parallel plate capacitor is filled with a, a non uniform dielectric yeah it is given to us that this is having non uniform property to so imagine if we have a capacitor like this So let's say A and B are terminals, and now the plate area is A, the gap is D, but the dielectric constant itself having the variation 1 plus x by D as you go towards right. So let's say we are taking the origin here. So as you move along the x direction, uh, it's not a vector sign, it's arrow. The k will change, rather it will increase. So can you find the c current here? Yes. Yeah, do it. Again, you have to think about how to cut the elementary and how to apply the parallel plate capacitance formula. Hello. Yes. Uh, is the answer K not absolutely not A by D LM2? LM2. Huh. Yeah, this seems to be the correct answer. The statement confirmed. Okay, so now okay, you know how to take element T. We have been discussing this for a while. But if you know the variation, the variation is with the X. Moving X and continue. Yeah. So you move X uh, from left hand. So we have to draw a locus at which x is constant, right? So you move x from the left end and then you cut a small piece of uh, dielectric and you can call this length as dx. Even though k is a variable, but it will not vary much between this region, right? So k is a variable, but k is constant for this small piece of dielectric, isn't it? And therefore, you can have DC question how much? K of that location, absolute not A by D. DX. And uh, the K we can substitute, so 1 by C equivalent because this is again C's combination. 1 by DC. And you will realize that the similar derivation you will see the entire chapter of conduction is again same. Uh, entire chapter of uh, uh, there is one more chapter uh, with the similar. So in uh, conduction, we have a quite a similar derivation. Uh, for current and electricity, we have similar derivation, derivation, and capacitor, of course. So you, you see that once you learn something at one point, it automatically reflects at uh, in multiple chapters. So in other chapters, you will see the application of the same. So let's write a dx upon k, we can now replace as k not one plus 
x by t into epsilon a and so the answer is k naught so we have we can take all the constant outs this is 0 to d and uh, we know this is ln 1 plus x by d and we have to divide by the coefficient of x which is 1 by d from 0 to d So D upon K naught so this is this L in uh, two. So the answer is correct indeed. So C equal to this K naught epsilon A by D L in two. Is this clear, guys? Or anyone having any doubt, please? Is this clear? Yes. Yeah. Uh, you can definitely solve uh, other question like this. Oh. If I give you again uh, a spherical capacitor. So if the K is varying as so this is R is 2R. So there are two types of uh, dielectric which is filled between the plates. Spherical capacitor with multiple dielectric. The outermost is 3R. Okay. So now the question is what is the equivalent capacitance? Okay, solve this. Or at least try. The hint is simple, find for the inner one, the uh, the pink one, find for the kind of green of something. Which color is called? I mean, I don't know the name also. Maybe LG color. So find the C for each and then further apply the series combination for the two. Understood? Yes. And to derive the answer for each, you have to again apply the series combination individually. Okay. Isn't it? Yes. In this one.
answer i think i got it yeah tell me but it is pretty big answer that's okay what is it so same okay k not an epsilon now okay so let me derive the first one. Let me call this part C1. This is C2. That's easy to derive. Right? So we can do 1 by C1 equals to uh, 1 by DC, which is uh, K epsilon naught 4 pi R square. Yes. DR. And this will go from R to 2R, to right? Yeah. And 1 by C2 will be DR upon K naught R. Absolutely not four pi r square. Am I right? Yes. Two r two. Two r. Yes. So this turns out to be log formula, right? Ln. Yes. Yeah. And dr by r, which is uh, ln, so ln two. Ln two. But this is not log formula. This is not a log. It's like a one by four pi absolutely not k not. And they want RQ actually. Yes. So dr by RQ is how much? So minus three plus one by minus three plus one is so minus R by minus minus one by two is correct. So four pi epsilon k naught into minus one by two R is correct. Right? Mm. This turns out to be very bad answer, but that's it. It is one by <coughs> four to eight R square minus one by nine fifty. The SM is uh, how much? 8 and 18. What is the SM? 72. 72. So it is 9 minus Five. 4. Yes. Five. So 1 by C equal we can write as 1 by C1, which is already there, ln2 by 4 pi epsilon k naught. <laughs> Plus uh, five by seventy two and uh, are you missing something? Yeah, I mean of course this looks uh, different because this k cannot be same. So I have to change this case. This is a very wrong precedence. If I keep it k not, it is not correct because Dimension of K will change. Right? Okay, I hope you are not getting this part. Dimension is important. So K not by R must have the dimension of K. When K not by R must be dimensionless, and K two R uh, in K two R K two is again dimensionless. So both will be dimensionless if they have different dimension, isn't it? Mm. So one is k not by r. So for that to be dimensionless, it must have been having dimension of r. And in which it is k to r, the dimension of k to should be one by r. I hope you're not getting this part. These are dimensional constants, not just constants. Okay? And to make it uh, meaningful, we have to make it k and k two. Otherwise, uh, you may take common, which is meaningless. Yes. That's it. So five by seventy-two into four by. Anyway, this is the answer. You can leave the answer like this. That's yes. it. Okay, so question can really go bad, as bad as possible.
So every question we solve by. So there is a very famous question. Just, just I wanted to give here. I just do that. Uh, So what you can see is a very small piece of uh, dielectric in K is the dielectric function. Now I have the freedom to put the plate the way I want. So I may put the terminal here. I may put the terminal uh, like this. I may put that terminal like this in the and this angle is uh, alpha, where is alpha is tending to zero. The inner radius is a outer radius is B from the center. So everything is given to you, A, B, and all, and we have directed. Okay, if I put a plate on the left and right, just name to one, if I put the plate uh, front and back, it's called two, if I put a plate uh, top and bottom, Let's call three. So for this three scenario, can you find the capacitance separately? What is C1? What is C2? And of course, ignore the, uh, the dimension shown here. Alpha is tending to zero, so you can understand that these two ones are almost parallel, right? It is just like this. What we are trying to create is a capital like this. Okay. I hope you're getting the idea of what I'm trying to say. Yes. So 
this is the small piece that I have shown here, and probably I have zoomed the word. This is the top. So try for a while, then I'll show.
Okay, so I think I should help you out. So the first task is okay, I'll just show you the top view of the first problem. In fact, the top view is sufficient. Uh, okay, I think I have missed one thing which you have never asked. In fact, it means still. Anyway, you didn't ask, it means you didn't get it also. So this is a unique problem and uh, a similar question is also asked in the chapter of a resistance. So if I just draw the top view. So this is the probably the diagram that you are looking at. If I choose uh, left and right as the terminal, then you can see that as you go away, the distance will increase. So the lines of force, if you have a plate actually like this, the property of lines of force is what? The lines of force always emanate at, uh, if I say this is plus, the lines of force will emanate at a right angle to the plate and will turn it again at right. I hope you remember this from electrostatics. So by putting the plus and minus charge, this is the lines of force that you need to understand. So we must follow the element in a shape of lines of force. So what I do is, uh, from here you move, let's say x and cut dx. So this dx part, which I have cut, is very thin and it is extending from the left plate till the right plate. So I can say for sure it is which kind of combination? Parallel combination because they are touching the plates. So yes. this dielectric is spread from left end to right end. Okay. So we need to write a DC equals to, look this carefully, K, absolutely not, nothing till here, there is no need to think much. What is the area? that the plate is facing for this taken directly. Can you guess the area? What is the area? The area is something like this. Do you see the area? This is the plate area. Can you see the guys plate area, which I've done here? Yeah. And uh, how much is that area? Mm. Pardon? What? How much is the area? That area is thickness into width, which is TDX. Because the dx is the length which we have cut, and t is the thickness. Thickness, yeah. This is like a rectangle of uh, dx as width and t as a height. So the area here is t dx. So the formula for dc is k epsilon not a by d. Now, what is the d here? That's interesting. So d is the distance between the plate along the field lines, not the shortest distance. What is the distance along the field lines? Can you see that? So along the field lines, the distance is alpha into x. 
How many of you realize this? This is alpha into x. This is the arc length, right? Yes. So because alpha is a very small angle, so if I know this is the x distance away from the center, the distance is alpha x, and that is why all such elementaries, if you see, will be in parallel. So you can say c equal to is dc integration, and logically, because dx is already in the numerator, so no need to invert it. That's like logical way of thinking. So this turns out to be k absolutely not t dx by x, and x will go from a to b, right? So C equivalent turns out to be ln B by A. Is this clear? Yes. So can you do for the other plate, let's say plate one and two? So for the, this plate and this plate, If I choose this as plus, uh, if I call this as positive terminal, and if I call this as negative terminal, then the lines of force will be like this. It will be a radial here, right? Isn't this? Okay. So now once we draw like this, to go from, see here the problem is if I want to make a elementary, the elementary I will make the similar way the way I made earlier. The only difference is and you may be wondering why the elementary is same, why not uh, like this? Because if you take the elementary like this, then the area on this side and on the outer side will change. And we want to keep it as parallel vector. Now the lines of force, if you move, if you walk along the lines of force, you can see the D. What is the D here? If this was a DX and thickness was D. So in the formula DC, what we should write? Can you guys tell me? K, K epsilon naught. What is the area through which the lines of force is entering? The lines of force will enter which area? Can you see the area? It will be same, right? Entering how the lines of force is there now? So through which area you are entering it? Do you realize it? No. You don't realize. Actually, this is three-dimensional view and uh, drawn on two-dimensional paper. The lines of force is entering from the front, na? front and back. Okay, probably you're not getting it. Actually, you are entering from this part. Look at the top right diagram. You're entering from this part, isn't it? And you're going to this part. I don't know anyone of you are able to see this. Yes, sir. So, through which area you're entering the. See, we always see the lines of force, and the lines of force will decide the D, right? So, it goes from one plate to other plate. But in this case, if I choose two as the terminal, then my lines of force will be from inner plate to outer plate or vice versa. <laughs> In any such case, what is the area through which the lines of force is entering the 
of going through or moving forward. Okay, I think I need to make it a big diagram. Are you guys not getting or you're not trying to get it? I mean, of course, you need to put some effort on this. You are waiting for the, some easier way? Tell me. So the 3D is a bit confusing. Um, so, okay. It is confusing, but you have a chapter of vectors in 3D. How are you going to study the chapter? Imagination is again a separate skill and let's develop it. I hope you can see the three dimensional view now better. Right? Yes. So now can you see everything? So depending on the plate, can you understand how the D should be decided, how the area should be decided? Can you understand now? So given the thickness T, the radius is A, the outer radius is B. So if I choose this as the entry point and this as the exit point, like this is the terminal. So what will be the capacitance? Tell me guys. Alpha is the angle given everything. So. And still, if you cannot visualize then, 
you have to develop this visualization ability and uh, this is not something extraordinary that uh, no one can develop everyone can develop with a bit of interest and uh, effort of thinking in three dimensional world so you are living in a 3d world and if you're not able to imagine it means there is something wrong so don't live properly so anyway you should look always something and see the the design all right so for the in in okay front and back for front and back side what is the k is k option not is option not what is a yeah what is a the a will be how much can you guess it's a tdx area a a a tdx is not there i mean do you realize that what is the area meaning okay don't realize none of you are aware when we have played like this This is the lines of course. So this is the area. So you can say that area and the elective field must be mutually perpendicular. Perpendicular. So what is the area then? Tell me. Now, if you have understood, tell me what is the area now? If the area, if the elementary, I have drawn x away. What is the area now? Yeah, what is the area? Tell me, guys, what is the area? Come on, if I choose the inner and outer, the front and back, if this is the entry, and this is the exit, what is the area which you see for the element? The lines of force will face which area? Can you see that? Tell me the color that you will face. Pink, green, red, uh, blue. Pink. So you don't know how to find the area of the pink? Is it so difficult? The pink will have the like a, a rectangle area, isn't it? <coughs> yeah. So what is the area of rectangle? Blend. If you don't know, you can just uh, take a water and dip inside. Take a dip inside. Yeah. Tell me what is the area? What is the pink area? Anyone? P into x L. P into X alpha. And that is the right answer. So the DC will be how much? Not telling the formula. DC equals to? K epsilon or T X alpha. K epsilon A. A is how much? T X alpha X. Yeah. X alpha upon D F. D? X. And uh, if you go from the front to back, these elements will be in series one after the other, right? Yeah. Therefore, the one by C equal will be one by DC, and you can simply integrate. The C equivalent turns out to be
Is this clear? Yes. And why we need to take element is that as you go from the inner plate to the outer plate, the area will keep on growing. So that is why I, we moved at a distance x, we cut dx so that uh, we can apply the parallel plate formula and then we can get the answer. What about the top and bottom? This is the front and back. Front and back. Okay, <clears throat> so for top and bottom, so if you think the top as the plate and bottom as the plate, so while you go from one plate to other plate, what will happen? The area will change or not? Tell me. So for top bottom, if I take top as a one plate as a bottom as other plate, yeah, and if you go from top to bottom, what will happen? The area will change, yes or no? When it be same. So if it is same, then can we say it is exactly parallel plate itself? Yes. And that's logical. So these are parallel plates, isn't it? Yes. So what is the area then? So C equal to this K. So what is the area of the top and the bottom or any plate? <laughs> the area of uh, sector is how much? What is the area of sector guys? Tell me. Half R square alpha. So, what is the area of this uh, given plate? Our plate is from where to where? You can see. <clears throat> this is like a truncated sector, right? So, what is the area of the sector? Anyone? It is going from A to B. Don't know area, volume, dimension. What kind of preparation you guys are doing? I really like to making mockery of the GE preparation. Don't know area. Okay, you are happy with it. Everyone should know the basic maths. It is half alpha b square minus a square, right? And this is the answer.
what will I, what I will teach? Tell me. I mean, my job is to teach physics. What I'm teaching, area is how much, volume is how much. <coughs> elementary, I have been teaching for like the last two years. Till this time, you're not getting what is elementary. <coughs> Why will you take this? If everyone is only looking for some sort of formula which can give you the kind of a tool that you can substitute the value and be happy about it, then that is not a GE preparation. That may be some preparation, I don't know which preparation. But what I know is that that is not a GE preparation. If you're dying only to substitute the value, because that is what you have been doing in class 10. And in class 10, I mean, I don't know, teachers say, okay, you're learning concept. Which concept? How to substitute the value. And that you call concept. Come on. So in school, that education is anyway lost. But what is left out is some cosmetic education. And we as a teacher are trying to reinstill the education. The way it should have been taught or the way it should have been uh, inculcated among the students. That is totally missing. The school is like a, a, a building with a everything cosmetic, no real development of education. Okay. So now we can move to the circuit. Capacitor as circuit. <clears throat> So I think we have discussed a bit in last lecture. So if we have a capacitor as a circuit, no matter which capacitor you talk about, the circuit representation remains the same. So whether we talk about a parallel plate or a inclined plate or a spherical or a cylindrical, no matter what we talk about, the C by representation is this one. So don't try to correlate that this is parallel plate. No, this is the circuit uh, uh, representation of capacitor. This is how we represent. <coughs> uh, you may put two vertical lines. That is also. Okay. And what we are going to learn today is the grouping of such capacitors. So we have seen the grouping of capacitor in series and parallel. And luckily, I mean, uh, quickly, I'll mention that. The one by series equal to equals to one by C. And the parallel we know it's a summation. So capacitor as a circuit, you can see that uh, it will have this two formula that with the help of this two formula, we can derive almost any other formula that we want. So we know the basic of series in parallel. Let's do some more complex one.
you know, this is a simple circuit here. Let's say all is C only. You can easily solve this. So what is the C current? You can keep on reducing the circuit as much in the formula. So for a N capacitor in series, N identical. So what was the formula for identical capacitor? Tell me guys. For identical capacitor, in series, combination the c equal to connect as c by n right yeah and for uh, n identical c equal to nc nc so the way to solve any circuit is you keep on reducing as you proceed so you can take a small example you reduce it you can reduce this part and then this part and this part so C and C will become how much? These two will become? These are in series combination. So this C by C by two. And then C by two, C by two, C by two will be in parallel. Yes. This entire term becomes three C by two. Keep it like this. So then these three are in series combination C by three. C by three. C by two. Yes. And now you can see the C by three and C by two are in parallel. And Okay, three, three C by two and this C are in series. Series. So for these two, what will the answer? <coughs> so this will become uh, three C by two into C upon three C by two plus C for series commission. This will be how much? Uh, three by five, right? Three by five. Now three C by five, C by three and C by two all are in? Parallel. Parallel. So we can say C point is how much? So the C equivalent turns out to be how much? Take calcium. 40. How much is that? 20. Uh, 15. 30. 15 is not uh, divisible by 2, right? Yeah, yeah. How okay. about? Forty-three So you can see this is a pretty easy and boring question of numbers. So we'll solve no question in which things are not so boring. I mean things are pretty good actually. So let's do a question. First is called question. Based on. Uh, redrawing. Okay. Or. Short circuit. It will just write down. Okay. Question based on short circuit. So, first thing that we need to understand here is called concept of. ISO potential points. So ISO potential points in a circuit are called equivalent points. So it means if two points are isolated, uh, sorry, ISO potential, then you can either join them together or you can stretch. You can either shrink as a one point or you can expand as big as you want. You can think two ISO points as uh, some sort of uh, chewing gum is attached between them. 
and if you want you can expand it you can contract it you can turn it into a single point or dot or you can keep it two points so that is the first thing is called isopotential points now the idea is every your conductor connector without any resistance so if i call it is a pure conductor which we generally use to connect the or make the joints so we connect uh, two capacitor or one capacitor with one resistor and one cell so the connecting wires are basically pure connectors so apart from the element which we represent we assume the connecting wires are pure connectors and for pure connector the thumb rule is the resistance is almost tending to zero we cannot assume equals zero so even for pure connector uh, the r we don't take zero so r is as close to zero as possible but it is not exactly zero that is why or that is the first property of pure connector okay now if the connector is pure and if it is carrying some current you won't get potential difference as per the ohm's law which you know from class 10 so if i this is a potential v1 this is potential v2 and if the current is moving from left to right so we can it is the potential difference comes to i into r but we know r tends to zero therefore the v1 minus v2 is equals to or you can say tends to zero and therefore v1 is tending to v2 so we for solving for purpose we take v1 equals to v2. so <clears throat> in a circuit if we have a connecting wires then although the potential are same roughly same it doesn't mean there is no flow of current current is flow here the the potentials are equal because the r is tending to zero it is not because there is no current so they i mean you may be wondering that okay a circuit with current may have zero potential difference roughly now the other case is <clears throat> even though we have some element if there is no current in a the circuit then potentials are also equal so if i call v1 v2 and even though there is some resistance of finite resistance because current is zero then v1 is still equal to v2 now this is the exact trick so between any branch of circuit if there is no flow of current then potential will be same <coughs> and in case of pure conductor or that is the mostly the connecting wires in case of pure conductor which are connecting wires which are connecting wires the potential will be same so v1 v2 are the isopotential in both case now once you understand the isopotential you can always do the stretching or shrinking of such points you can either draw as two separate point or you can draw as one point or you can just uh, think as one point so it's up to you so this is the circuit uh, property so let's say if i draw a simple c circuit which looks like this so we have capacitor and today you all will practice along with me you will not only see the what i am doing because if you don't practice you will never get to terms with the solving circuit it is very difficult task to do that so let's all put effort together so now this is the circuit and i'm asking that uh, can you tell me the c current tell me the answer so except capacitor every wire is connect connecting wires and uh, for the every segment of connecting wires which is 
not holding any circuit element, the potential elements. So first you do by the method which you know already from your high school, if you know the basic of series and parallel idea, uh, you may apply and you may get the answer, then I'll give you the idea. Is this three C? Yeah, this is three C. Correct answer. So, how many of you got the answer three C? Tell me, guys. Raise your hand if you've got three C. Okay, so now first of all, there is a something called junction, the idea of junction. So we'll talk about something called idea of junction. So in a circuit, a junction is called a point at which at least three branches or more than three branches meet together. Once again, what is junction? A point at which minimum three or more than three branches meet together. So a point in a circuit at which at least three branches meet together, okay? Is this clear? What is junction? Yes. Uh, in a circuit, if there is no branch, or if there is just uh, two branches meeting together, maybe we have one capital here, we have one capital here, then this point is called node. So node is called any point at which at least two or more than two branches meet together. So at least two branches meet together. So junction is extension of node. So every junction is a node, isn't it? Yes. Every junction is node, but every node is not a junction. Yeah. Because node is possible with uh, two also, but junction begins at three, isn't it? Sure. So this is what you need to remember. Okay. So now once you understand the concept of node and junction, can you identify the number of junctions in the circuit? So this is what, what you need to read actually. This is what you need to learn that how to read junction. So can you read the junction? 
in the given circuit. Five. Uh, okay. I can see seven. Seven, sir. Okay. You missed that terminal actually. Every terminal represents that something is going to be connected further, right? So this is okay, that. Yeah. This is something that we have to connect further, maybe a battery or maybe some other circuit. So if I count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes. Okay, the first step is can we count the junction? When we solve any circuit, the first thing that we need to develop is the eye to understand the junction. We need to see the junction. Okay. Okay. So once you see the junction, the next step is, can you tell me which junctions are at same potential? So how to know whether they are at same potential or not? If nothing is connected except the connecting wire, then all junction will have same potential. So if you look carefully, If I call this as now, let's number it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So which junctions are having same potential? Can you see the ISO potential points? Right, one and two. One and two are ISO potential, are you sure? Sir, one, five, six. One, five, six, correct. One and two is having the capstone in between, right? Yeah. Can you go from one to two directly without any element? No. So how they are like a same potential, come on. So every two points in which if we have some register or capacitor, they are not called ISO potential until you know that they are having uh, definitely zero charge or zero current. So you can see one, six, five is on the left. All are having same potential. Do you realize this? Yes. And two, three, four? Also. So how many distinct potential points we have in the entire circuit? Distinct. Okay. So we have three distinct ISO potential points. Okay, we are trying to learn the circuit through logical, not just by doing some intuition. So now we have three distinct ISO potential points. So the rule is, once you have analyzed the ISO potential, draw the three dots in a same sequence, left, center, middle. The three ISO potential points. Yes, that's correct. That is correct. Okay. So because we have three ISO potential, so I can say one, five and six, all three are having same point? Yes. The seven is in the middle separate. And then two, four, and five, uh, three. Three. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. So you can see two, three, four are the same potential. Now this is the only three junction. I mean, there are three junctions. And what we need to do is just draw the three junction. And then the next step is redraw the circuit the way you can see. So how many capacitors we have? So we have capacitor uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. So you can see from between one and two, we have one. Okay. So one and two, we have only one. One is here and two is here. So we have one and two. Then we have uh, something here also, if you look carefully. Then we have two capacitors between these two points. If you look carefully. How? Oh, so you have to count like this. One to two, we have done. One to seven, we have done. Then uh, five to seven, you can see we have split. And one, five, six, all are same. So one to seven is same as five to seven, isn't it? We have five to four, then we have seven to four and seven to two, which are all the same. So your diagram will look like this. Do you realize this? 
So how many of you are able to understand the diagram first? And this is our terminal N B. Correct. Sir, can you show previous two? Just connect the actual capacitor between every point. The way you can see here, we have one to two. So you start from. You, you can take any point one, and then see how many capacitors are directly connected. So one to two is one, one to seven is one, and there is nothing in there. One is done, right? So one to two and one to seven. We are done with one part like this. Then beginning from five, from five, how many we have? From five to seven and five to four. Yes, again. Again two. So five to seven and five to four. Yes. All are done. Then from six, how many we have? So we have nothing from six anywhere, right? So six is six. Right? Yes. The same thing I have done for other points, and then this is the my new circuit which I have drawn, and you can clearly see how it is. Simple series and parallel grouping, which you can solve, right? So, what is the answer for this? Tell me. Three C, right? So you are speaking. So three C, the right answer. How many got three C now? So are you guys able to reduce the circuit now? Yes or no? Yes. Sir. Now, if the same question, I, if I would have given in terms of register, you would have solved with a formula different. Right? Series become parallel, and parallel becomes series, right? So we can do question of a register also here, parallelly, so that we can save some time. So every circuit I am going to solve here only. I will not repeat in the chapter of next I mean, because we have a lot of things to study there. So if I ask you what is the R equivalent, what will be the answer? The formula will reverse if you remember. Yes. So what is the answer going to be here? So here you can solve C C become two C two C become C C C, C by three, ah, uh, R by three. Yeah, correct. R by. Yeah. So the answer is pretty simple. It's R by three. Uh, let's do the other example. See, although it with uh, easier question, we can always apply the intuition, get the answer as soon as possible, but. The moment you want to learn the circuit, you have to develop some like logical intuition. It is not touching the branch. This is called bypass in circuit, right? The notation is for bypassing, right? It is not touching. So that won't be a junction, right? Exactly, that won't be junction. So now, can you redraw the circuit and solve it again? Can you guys redraw again?
Hello. Yeah, what is the answer? Tell me the answer. Hello, 2C. No, it's again 3C only. Big, but, uh, if you read, you will get uh, something like this. Yes. C, C by 2, C by 2, and C. This is 3C, right? Yes, sir. I got. I got two C. Tell me. Sir, I have a doubt. In this, the middle part is not jun junction, right? Yeah, so, no. if we number them like one, two, three, four, five, six, we get six junctions. Yeah. So, uh, so one. Like one to two. two three, four, uh, five, six. All one, two, three, same point. One to four, we have one. As per the way I have shown, it is one, two, three, and four, five, six. Ah, yes. Okay. Now, correctly, one, two, four, we have one. One, two, yes, four. Ah. Then one, two, six, we have two, actually. Oh, okay. That will also. And then three to four is again two. If you, if, because you can go from three to four directly to a path with two characters. Okay, right? have middle, nothing is. Okay, got it. Is this clear now? Yes, what? Sir, yeah. For the resistance part, the answer will always be opposite, right? Like three C, so R by three. Yeah, it is like for symmetry. Yeah, for, for symmetrical diagram, yeah, answer is correct. Okay. What you said is correct. So it will be reversed. So you can replace uh, C equivalent as one by R, and uh, you get the answer. <clears throat> okay. So this is done. Everyone, are you guys okay with this question? Yes. Are you realizing the concept of a method of redrawing the circuit? Yes. So ISO potential is an idea which you have to develop. Look at this question. So first of all, identify the junction, name it, redraw it, and tell me the answer. <coughs> Everyone, please.
Sorry, I did see. I don't think so. But it is 3C by 4. 3C by 4. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, I, I got this. So if you number it, I can list a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, Kano, you can leave the lecture, not, not an issue, but uh, I'll continue. This is an easy one. So you can capture it uh, after watching it for one and a half, half an hour. I'll leave by 9.30. Okay. <clears throat> so if you read, though, first of all, can you see the isoponential points? Which points are isoponential? 1 and 3, 2 and 4, and then last one. So 1 and 2 and 3 and 4, uh, 2 and 4. Ah, and last, last one. one. So we have three points only. Technically, yeah. we have three points. So we only look for the number of electrical points. We have three, and then we reconnect. So you can see we have 1 to 2. One hit left, two to the right. Yes. Then we have a uh, two to three. One. Okay. Two to three. So this is coming back here, right? But two is here and three. Then this is one two. Then we have three and four. Three to four. Three. And see, so it becomes really easy. Now it is four to four five. Four to five. <coughs> so C C C. 3C and 3, which is 3C by 4, right? Yes. Is it difficult? No. If I give you a similar question. Yeah, yeah, not an issue. Anyone have a lecture at 9, please leave. So today I'm only going to, only just going to discuss the... Uh, Series and parallel with you. can watch it later. Mm -hmm. So, what is the R equivalent here? Just redraw and practice it. Four R by three. Four R by three. Yes, definitely. So once you learn the ability to redraw, you will see that the circuit has suddenly become easy for you. And you always have the flexibility to convert one form from line to other form, which looks better to your brain, uh, or you can see symmetry and all. So yeah. This equivalent capacitance and resistance will always be reciprocal of each other, or is this just a no? Point? It is. Uh, it is generally reciprocal. Generally. Okay. Uh, but uh, yeah, you can say it is always, not generally. It is always. Okay. If you know one answer, you can always get the other answer. Okay. <clears throat> so let's take something up.
So every segment, if it represents one capsule, what is the sequence between them? Now this is a simple question of CS problem. So don't think that every question will have the you need to redraw. Here nothing is to redraw. You can just simplify this. You can reduce part of it. Every triangle is reducible, isn't it? Every triangle is reducible. You can reduce it. And I can tell you the answer. It is 2, 7, uh, 3C by 2. Correct? If you don't realize. Oh. Yes, sir. See every junction. Can you see the junction? So every junction you can stretch and pull it away, isn't it? Yes. The best way is to first you can see, if you want you can separate the junction so that you can see the picture better. You can see there is one triangle. Five triangles. Then we have some junction, some support. <laughs> so we, in total we have five triangles, right? Yes. And I'm asking the answer between any two points, right? Like this. 
3c so i can just show the okay. let's say okay. what is the answer yes you can see all the four trans series yes and it is in parallel with this one right yes that's it <clears throat> so can you reduce each triangle what is the c equivalent of each triangle So you mean if you make a trunk, it becomes two by three bumper. C, two C by three. Pardon? Two C by two. Three C by two, no? It ah, is three C by, by two. two. Sorry, sorry. So three C by two. Uh, there are four such in series. So three C by two by four. Yes. If these are identical, then if you repeat the same same uh, geometry or same structure, it will decay, right? It will decrease by four times. So three C by eight and three C by two are in parallel, right? So three C by two and three C by eight are in parallel. We can add it. So how much is the answer? Fifteen C by fifteen C by eight. Yeah. So you know, I hope you are realizing that how to proceed. Like yes, the sir. idea of junction, the idea of equal potential is to make things easier. So if you see some shapes are not giving you the confidence to solve, you can just uh, remove here and there. So it is like you have the ability to remold the given shape, which is easier to your mind. And that is the intuition that you have to develop. <laughs> so there is no, like, nothing like I can give you a question and we'll solve for sure. <laughs> Let's see if I give you a question like this. What is CAB? All are C less. Will it be five C by two? So then the triangle is three C by two, right? And this uh, this three C by two, this is three C C by two. Three C by eight. We can do like this, like first the four are in series. Which four are in series? <laughs> how like, how four are in series? Yes, Which sir, four you can see? Three C by eight. Yeah, correct. So how you think of the, the series? Series means what? If some charge or current is in the flow, it will remain same, right? So, but it will divide here, no? Yes. Yes. Sir. So you cannot call this in series. Series means nothing should distribute in between that's that's then only we can call series so this is not in series this is not in series sorry guys so you have to think of junction this is junction yes so junction will divide the circuit so you have to think of a let's create a, a triangle here and that is the easy way to think now you can see that what are in series this capacitor and triangle and this hole is in series and you can reduce the triangle right yes, so now you can see the c the three c by two and c these three are in series combination isn't it <laughs> understood and what else you need to also remember <coughs> that the c and this c are in series eventually so it really doesn't matter where they are located on the right or left or together you can always bring them to together and reduce it. So this C and this C we can reduce as C by two. Yes. And then it is in series with three C by two. And now three C by two is C by two. You can see this is the the division is what three times. So for series combination, what is the answer? The bigger value upon the ratio plus one. Four. I hope you remember this trick. Yes. Yes.
if i give a question like this what is cab <laughs> A and B are your terminals. So what is CAB? You see, by two. The answer is C by two only. That's it. Now, when we ask question like this, I mean, I know it is always very difficult. But yeah. when I say A and B are terminal, then it means the battery or the cell will be connected across this part. Yes. So this is the loop, right? Yeah. The closed path. Now a circuit part which is not part of any closed path will not carry any charge or current. Oh. So this is not at all used actually. This is like just some rubbish hanging there. So this is called the vestigial circuit, a biological term. So vestigial means that which is useless. How to understand that? Yeah. So for that you have to connect the terminal with the battery. And check for the loop. For example, if I create a battery here, you can see loop is the entire thing. Yeah. So current will flow here also, here also. Yes. So every branch where the current can possibly go is a part of my circuit. And if it is cannot go at all, then it is called vestigial circuit. We have to throw it out. So before solving question like this, we have to completely remove. So this is of no use. Just throw it or oh, sell it or Yes, so okay. see by yeah. So if I if I make it uh, just to get this idea C two C three C A B C find. A, B, B, C, C. Find A, B, B, C, C.
Hello. Yes. C A A B will be two C by three. Uh, C B C will be six C by five. Yeah. And C C A will be three C by four. Correct. So you have got the idea that when we have yes. a circuit, if we know in advance that current cannot reach a branch, it means our charge cannot reach a branch. It means it is of no use. No use. Although we see, we are trying to find the capacitance which can store charge, and if you are not participating in the competition, so you may be the part of the delegation but not playing. It is like it is of uh, it is not present there, right? Yes. So similarly, every capacitor which we represent in a circuit need not to be participating. Okay, it is not necessary that all must participate. It is quite possible that some of them will not participate. Clear? Clear. Okay, so now we are going to solve a different matter question. This is something uh, very level zero question. We are done with level zero question. Sometimes you won't be able to see the how to reduce it. I mean, you will have the difficulty in uh, figuring out that how to reduce it. So let me show you one question. And this is equally available in the current chapter also and this chapter also.
sir, you are speaking? No, no, I was not speaking. So. What is CA between fund the answers here? Got the answer, guys? Anyone? Sir, one, sir. So only two, you, you two are there. Everyone has left. Yeah. I will stop the lecture, don't worry. Next 10 minutes. This is the last question. You can start reducing from this side. You can see that it will keep on reducing forever. 
Yeah. So you cannot read it from the left, you have to read it from right actually. So this is totally reducible, right? Yeah. Yes. And once you reduce it, that will become again reducible further. Yeah. Right. Then again, so it will like a, like a domino effect. You Once you start, you can see it will reduce and you can do it mentally. Yes, sir. But if I replace, suppose I replace the rightmost square, then that would be in, no. Okay. I first, you, first you reduce this three. Three by two also in that. First you reduce this three, then only you can go further. Okay. You have to think of one branch. See, this is junction. So if I cut yeah. the junction, if I cut the junction, then junction will create this three layer or this three capsule as a separate entity. So 2C, 2C, C and C, C, C by 2. C by, two. C by 2 and this C by 2 next will C be in parallel, four. which is C again. Oh, parallel? Ha, ha, this parallel. Is parallel. Yeah, yeah. This is C by 2 and this C by 2 and this C by 2 are in parallel. Right? parallel. So same this is C. Then again, it is similar actually. So you can see C, 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 and the last answer is C by 2. Done. Yeah. So eventually this is C, na? 2C, 2C, C, and C, C, C by 2. So last answer is this. Yeah. So this was a really easy question, but <coughs> just you have to learn that, okay, if you don't see the reduction from one side, you have to proceed from the other side. <laughs> okay. Okay, last question as a homework that you can try at home. Okay, so this is the homework. So try at home and uh, solve it. Next lecture, we'll see the difficult one, uh, some challenging problem of circuit. So basically, we are learning circuit from capacitor also and from uh, register also. So we are going to finish both of them together and then we can move forward. Bye, guys. Take care. Okay. Good night. Bye, sir. Good night.